Hey, Travis. Uh, just wondering if you have any updates on any of the players that uh, were out of your lineup and deemed unfit to play at the end of the series. Uh, no, not really. Um, God, that is probably could be available now. He was unfit to play, and uh, we needed him. I think he would have he would have played. We'll go on to Jay Janauer, Global. Travis, good morning. Congratulations on advancing on to the next round. Um, I wanted to get your thought process, Travis, on on just the series itself and what it means for your team in your matchup either against Dallas and St. Louis and what it means for the overall development. Because, you know, watching Petey compete, he took a lot, but he gave a lot, and he just kept on going. Uh, Quinn Hughes just kept on getting stronger. Your team – you know, you faced deficits, you scored goals. It really was playoff hockey, and it's something that they had to manufacture on their own. There's no crowds there. Uh, it just seems really organic. But moving forward, Travis, how do you think it bodes well for, the, for this core of, that you have, that you've assembled? Well, I think uh, uh, that could be a two-part question uh, as far as the now and the future. Um, you know, for the present, it, it bodes well for our group because we're still playing. Um, and we've learned a lot as we've gone. It's even in four games, I think. Uh, you know, I said it after game one. You know, there was a lot taken out of us after that first game. I think, um, A, physically, uh, just from a playoff hockey is very intense. And, and we had, you hadn't played a game like that in a while. And emotionally, um, our group was really upset that they lost the next day and down. Uh, and for them to come back and and win the next three games is is uh, it's impressive uh, with a young group. Uh, I think it bodes well, obviously, for the next series. They've gone through a lot already. It feels like it was it was a tight series as far as fighting for space. Um, you know, Minnesota defends so well. Uh, they don't give you a lot, and it was it was a real tight space series, really. And I thought our team defended um, as, as good as I've seen them. It was something we've talked a lot about uh, for not, not to give up a five on five goal till the fourth game is, uh, you know, I don't think anyone would have said that about our group going into it. So that tells me that they really bought in to what, how, how we had to play to win. And, um, you know, individually, there was a lot of good efforts, not just by our young guys, but, man, a lot of our older guys really did a lot of things that are hard to do as far as sacrificing and putting their bodies on the line. <clears throat> our young guys did uh, did play outstanding. Petey was competitive. I thought Quinn took his game to another level. Brock Besser was probably the best I've seen him. You know, Jake fighting in the last game, It's it's a little thing, but it's – you know, he's a young guy still learning that power forward game uh, and picking spots and when to do stuff like that. So there's a lot of things. Sutter played, you know, had a, had a really good series. Uh, and we're, we're excited. It's good that we've had a couple of days to get ready for the next series. Uh, we still don't know who we play. Uh, and as far as the future goes, um, you know, it feels like, since I've been here, it's been three years now that we've been talking about, you know, the process and there is a process to everything and, and learning how to win, learning how hard it is to win, um, playing these type of games and the differences in them. It's night and day. Uh, and our guys are feeling it, finding out, learning from it. Um, and there's, there's no better way to learn than to have success. Uh, and I know this wasn't an actual round of 16 playoffs, but trust me, it was no different than a playoff series. And for them to go, go through this before you actually get to the playoffs is, uh, it means a lot for every team, but it means a lot for a young team for sure uh, to get there. So sorry about the long-winded answer, but. Thank you. Next up, we have Farhan Lalji, TSN. Travis, uh, had things gone a little differently Friday, you probably get asked about Tyler Myers and nine penalties so far, or to, you know, to this point in that series. Um, I know some of the calls were a little bit borderline, but is that something you need to address going into the round of 16 here? Uh, yep. We'll talk about discipline. We do a lot. Next up, we have Jeff Patterson, TSN 1040. 
Travis, will you watch the St. Louis Dallas game in person? Uh, probably, yeah. I'm just curious, like, I mean, obviously you're hyper focused on your team and what you have to do, but life in a bubble. Have you taken in other games, something you don't get a chance to do during a regular season? Yep. Um, you know, on days off, I've gone over a little bit. Uh, you know, before we started, I watched a lot more uh, before we got going into it. Uh, some of the exhibition or a couple of the exhibition games, but on days off, we'll venture over and watch a couple periods. So it's been, it's been kind of nice, but I haven't watched a game, another game for uh, a little while now. We're pretty focused on our own group, but you know, we can also watch them on TV all day. It's been great for hockey fans and uh, you know, being in the bubble, you can, you can watch hockey all day if you want. We'll go to Ben Kuzma, Post Media. <laughs> Hey, a couple from me, uh, Travis. Um, there was lots, lots of visual evidence after uh, Friday night as to the mood of the club. What, what are you just sensing? We, we kind of take it for granted, Travis, that you know these are paid professionals, but you do have so many playoff newbies on your club. Um, what do you sense around them even after that victory and the next day? And how much can that play into next series? Yeah, it was emotional. Uh, man, our group was... They were excited to win, and rightfully so. It's uh, there's been a lot of build up to this, uh, a lot of sacrifice. Guys are away from their families. Uh, you play in a Canadian market, and uh, the great thing about playing in a Canadian market is uh, the fan base and how passionate they are and how bad they want to win. Um, you know, players sense that too, and they understand that the magnitude of it, not just for themselves. Uh, but the team, the organization, the city. And, um, you know, you could see it in our, in, I know there's been some posts on, on showing our, our team afterwards or they're excited. And, uh, you know, it's been good that they've had a couple of days now to just kind of breathe a little bit. Uh, we haven't done a lot of talking with our group yet. We've just let them, let them relax a little bit and get refocused. Next up, we have a follow-up from Brennan Batchelor. Travis, uh, over the past few years, there's been a lot of criticism about some of the guys in your bottom six, and it's largely tied to their contracts. But how good do you feel for guys like Louis Erickson, Brandon Sutter, Jay Beagle, that they were able to be such big parts of a series win for your group? Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't – internal. there might be a lot of talk outside of the team about stuff like that, but we don't – internally there isn't uh, – Guys on the team know the value, coaching staff, players. Um, and those, those guys all had great series. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into them individually, but we, we didn't just win with our top six, I can tell you that. Our, uh, our bottom six played, played a big factor in it, and they led the way in, in a lot of different areas that are, um, you know, you don't notice all the time. Uh, and it's not just on the ice as well, uh, in the locker room, before games, in between periods, on the bench during the game when things are going, you know, maybe going the wrong way or it's getting a little bit heated and, and emotional. So, you know, all these players that we've signed, they're, they're signed for a reason and uh, or traded or drafted and everyone has something that they bring to the table. And um, I thought – to a man, everyone brought something to the table. And with the club uh, qualifying for the playoffs, the uh, draft pick that was involved in the JT Miller trade goes to New Jersey. I know that won't matter to any of your players or the coaching staff. You guys are focused on what's happening on the ice right now, but just a word on what JT Miller has meant to your group, both on and off the ice. We see the video of him reading out the starting lineup the other night and getting the dressing room fired up. It seems like he's really become a leader in your room already. Yeah, he's one of the guys that's a leader for sure in our group. He's when he came here, we talked about that that um, he felt he was ready to take on that that type of role or or a bigger role in the leadership uh, department on a team. He he really probably hadn't had that before, and with some of the teams he played on. But uh, yeah, he's been a big part of our group. You know, you know he's a, he's uh, he's. A leader and a, and a louder guy in our room. He, I saw the, or when I was in the room and saw him reading the 
lineup and they had the music teed up for him. It was, uh, <laughs> at first I was laughing about it a bit, but I think it really helped our group and kept them a little bit looser and fired them up at the same time. And JT's got a way of doing that at, at the right time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, we've talked about JT a lot this season. He's a big part of our group. It's been a great trade for our team. Um, on the ice, off the ice. Uh, so, yeah. We'll go to Farhan. Travis, uh, you mentioned uh, Goddard earlier. Do you expect Tyler Toffoli to potentially be available in this round, this series? Not sure, um, Farhan. We'll have to wait and see. And next up, we have Kevin Woodley. Hey, Travis, I'm wondering, I'm not sure if you even can, but update us possibly on Jordy Ben, both in terms of the process to get back with your group and what beyond that you might need to see for him to be an option for your club in this round. Uh, I'm expecting Jordy to practice with the team in another, uh, I want to say two or three days. And um, we'll just have to wait and see where he's at as far as uh, conditioning and how he feels on the ice. And I know you, you're not sure who you're going to play in the next round, but would you indulge us uh, what, what each potential opponent, what makes them difficult, um, St. Louis and Dallas, depending on who you face? Uh, yeah, they're both really good teams. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty obvious when you, you've watched them play the last few years, Stan, Stanley Cup winner and uh, a team that was on the verge to go into the Stanley Cup. So, um, Whatever team we play, we'll, it'll be a good matchup, a hard matchup, and uh, we'll, we'll find out today who we play. And we have time for one final question from Ben Kuzma, Post Media. Yeah, one last one from me, Travis. So you touched on Brandon Sutter at length the other day. Uh, a big goal Friday, nine shots, 14 attempts, great in the circle, PK, even the power play. Uh, I missed it earlier. You touched on Goddard. What, what is your message to Goddard through all this? Because you've got Sutter in the spot. You need him as a veteran uh, key member of that third line, uh, playing a strong two-way game. So what's your, what's your message to him? Uh, I'm not going to get into what my message is to players, individuals. He, God's is, he understands it. And first of all, he wasn't, uh, like I said, he was, caught, he was unfit to play. Uh, I'm not going to get into it any further than that, but uh, God's is a good young player and um, he's, he's fine with where he's at right now. But like I said, he was uh, unfit to play and there's a lot that goes into that as well at playoff time and decisions we make. And uh, I'll just leave it at that for now.